Now, the workflows will be a very important topic because the workflows will take the CRM from just a basic Excel into something much more sophisticated. You can find the workflows under the settings on the right top. And then you can go to uh, the workflow rules on the left bottom. So the workflow rules can be found here under the settings. And the idea of the workflow rules are to create some kind of an automation. Um, we are going to create in the next few minutes, few workflows just so I can show you how it works. So let's begin. So we have here one lead and we're going to have uh, later. So we are going to have some uh, automation on this lead. So the first one is whenever a lead is created, I like to send a notification to uh, the lead owner. And that will be the first uh, automation that we are going to have. So I will go to the create rule under the workflow rules. I will click on leads because this is the module that I'm working on. As you can see here, I have all the modules in my system but the one that is relevant to this exercise will be the leads. And the name should be something meaningful, something like uh, alert the lead owner on a new lead, okay? At the top of the section, you can see that you have three different uh, radio buttons. The first one will be on a record action. The other one will be daytime and the third one will be score. Right now we are going to work only on record action because that's the simplest. When you're clicking on the record action, if you think about it, when you have a record and this is a record, you can have really few options. One, when this record is created, which means if I am going now to a lead, I am going to create here some kind of a lead and let's go the king and company name. So once I click save, now this lead is created. And if I will have a workflow that is marked on create, this is when the automation will start. Okay. Another one will be when the workflow is created or edited. So created, we already discussed it, but edited means that I change any kind of value on this record. That means it's edited. Now, this is a big mistake that uh, people will have when they're creating workflows. If you are not having a checkbox on repeat this workflow whenever <clears throat> whenever a lead is edited, that means that that will take place only once. Now, it, sometimes people will try to test their workflow. They will not have a check mark here, and then they will see that the workflow is not working. Now, it's not because the workflow is incorrect. It's because they did not mark, repeat this workflow when the lead is edited. Okay, so this is an important one. Edit, it just means that it's it will take place only when you're editing a record and not on create and edit as before. The field update is very useful. As an example, if I like to initiate the workflow, this automation, whenever the lead type is being changed, let's say it changed from sales to question, then instead of having a full edit, I will have it only on the field update. And I will select here the correct field, which is the lead type. The last, the last one, as you can understand, if I will go to a record and I will click on delete, then this workflow will take place. Okay. So right now, let's uh, just play with create. Next, we have the condition. 
So the first one, the when, was when to initiate, when to start, to push the button and start this automation. The second one will have some conditions. Let's assume that I like to send an alert only when the lead type is sales. So we're starting here. This rule is being executed when a lead is created. But I don't want to get an alert for all the leads because I'm from the sales. From the other side, there are people that are dealing with questions, but this is not me. So I will have here the lead type is sales. So here I will have a condition. If the lead type is sales, only then the automation will take place. So you can see that you have two parts, and this is where people are getting confused. Part number one is the creation. Part number two is creation, but not for all the cases, just some of them. You can see also here that you have the plus button and you can have more conditions. Let's say, and also the city is Toronto, because I am in charge only on the Toronto area. Um, Below number one, you can see that you have here a toggle for on and uh, end and or. This toggle will say that if the lead is sales and the city is Toronto, then it will send a notification. If I will mark it as or, it means that the lead type is sales or the city is Toronto. So it's completely different. So just pay attention whenever you create conditions just to make sure that the end or will be in the right position. So let's say if you're only lead type is sales and the last part will be what I like to happen when this condition is met. So when the lead is created and the lead type is sales, then I can have here multiple items or multiple actions that they can pl take place. You have here a field update, which means I can update any type of field on the record to be any type of value that I want. I can add or remove tags. I can notify by email or click. I can assign tasks and more and more. So you can see that they have lots of different options in the actions and Zor extending this list all the time. The create record was added, I think, a month and a half ago. It's very, very cool for people that wants to create additional records when uh, something happens, when a condition is met. So we are going to uh, click on notify via email, and we are going to click here, and let me just discuss that for a second. When someone creates an email template, that means that the email template is just the content. What I'm creating now, think about it like a container. So this container will not have only the content of the email. It will also have who is going to receive this email, who is sending the email, Right, so we have we have more more things that we are considering here. So let's click here and we'll write um, notify the lead owner when a new lead is created. The receptions will be the email, which means the lead email, the person who is the lead. And if you want, you can have here groups, roles. You can notify, for example, a specific user in the group. If I will click on email, that will be the lead email, not the lead owner. If I like the lead owner, I need to click here on owner. And now you can see that the lead owner is the one that is being created. Okay. And the last thing I need to select which email template will be created. And then I will create some kind of an email template. Let's go with the non-converting ones. Birthday is good enough. Alert the lead owner.
okay. Um, the number sign, if you don't know much about uh, email templates, it's less than I think 10 or 11 in the course, but anyway, uh, you can have here the number sign and then you can have the lead owner. So it will be, let's say, Lee or Isaac. You got a new lead. And here instead of here, instead of name, dear, lead owner, you got a new lead. And of course, if you like, you can also have some details here. That was just an example, right? Sorry about the noise outside. There is something is going on there. They're cleaning something. That's the funny part about live webinars. Okay. So I will select here the lead owner and we'll have your save and associate and save. Before I click on save, let's go last time when the lead is created and the lead type is sales, this email notification will be sent and click on save. Now, when I will go ahead and I will create a new lead, uh, let's give it a name, Joanne or 12, 12 is also good. And that's Joe last one, two and company name. And when I click on save, an email just been fired to the lead owner. Okay. Thank you very much for watching this session. I'm promoting now my Zo CRM course. I am giving 50% off to my existing customers that tagged me as a partner. And of course, I'm also giving 50% off to new customers that tagging me as, a, as their partner. Okay. So thank you very much for watching this session. I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.